to public comment early, you can press star 1 on your phone at this time. Once again, if you wish to enter the queue to make a public comment at this time, please press star 1 on your phone at this time. Your conference will begin at 6 p.m. Eastern. And we'll be back in just a moment. Appreciate your patience. Please stay on the line and we'll be back in a moment. talking with you soon. Please hold the line, and we'll be right back with you. talking with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. back in just a moment. Thanks for holding. We appreciate your time and patience. Please stay on the line and we'll be back in just a moment. back with you. talking with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, your conference call will begin at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. If you wish to enter the queue at this time, please press star 1 on your phone. Once again, if you have not already entered the queue, please press 
star 1 if you wish to make a public comment. Your conference will begin at approximately 6 p.m. Thanks for holding. We appreciate your time and patience. Please stay on the line, and we'll be back in just a moment. Appreciate your patience. Please stay on the line and we'll be back in a moment. talking with you soon. Please hold the line, and we'll be right back with you. talking with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. Please stay on the line, and we'll be back in just a moment. Thanks for holding. We appreciate your time and patience. Please stay on the line, and we'll be back in just a moment. back with you. talking with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you.
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, thank you for joining the conference. Your conference will begin at approximately 6 p.m. Eastern. If you wish to enter the queue to make a public comment and you have not already done so, you may enter now by pressing star 1 on your phone. Once again, if you wish to make a public comment during the call and you wish to enter the queue now, please press star 1 on your phone. Your conference will begin at approximately 6 p.m. Eastern. We sincerely appreciate your patience. Please stay on the line and we'll be back in a moment. talking with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. talking with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining the conference call. Your conference call will, be just, will begin in just a couple of minutes. Just a reminder, if you have not already done so and you wish to enter the queue to make a public comment, you may press star 1 on your phone at this time. Once again, if you wish to enter the queue to make a public comment and you have not already done so, you can please do that by pressing star 1 on your phone at any time. Your conference call will begin in just a couple of minutes. We appreciate your time and patience. Please stay on the line and we'll be back in just a moment. appreciated. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. to talking with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you.
appreciate your time and patience. Please stay on the line, and we'll be back in just a moment. Good evening. I hereby call to order the Board of Directors regularly scheduled meetings of the New Jersey Transit Corporation, New Jersey Transit Rail Operations, Inc., New Jersey Transit Bus Operations, Inc., New Jersey Transit Mercer, Inc., and New Jersey Transit Marner, Inc. Good evening, Chair Gutierrez, Cachetti, and Board Members. I will now take roll call. For the record, Board Member Morocco is absent at today's meeting. Board Member Adams? Here. Thank you. Board Member Doshi? Here. Thank you. Board Member Gordon? Here. Thank you. Board Member Nara? Here. Thank you. Board Member Rasmussen? Here. Thank you. Board Member Ajmani? Here. Thank you. Board Member LaRusso? Here. Thank you. Vice Chair Fulton? Here. Thank you. Chair Gutierrez Cachetti? Here. Thank you. Open public meetings notice. This is a regular meeting of the New Jersey Transit Corporation and its affiliates and subsidiaries. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act and New Jersey Transit's enabling legislation. Notice was filed on July 15, 2021, with the Secretary of State and sent to newspapers of general distribution, posted in the main entrance of New Jersey Transit Headquarters, published on the corporation's website, and sent each individual, agency, and organization that requested such notice. Thank you. At this time, I ask for a motion and a second to approve the minutes of the June 9, 2021 board meeting. Nara, motion. Gordon, second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Joyce, would you please take a roll call vote? Roll call vote. Board Member Adams? Yes. Board Member Doshi? Yes. Board Member Gordon? Yes. Board Member Nara? Yes. Board Member Rajmani? Yes. Board Member LaRusso? Yes. Vice Chair Fulton? Yes. Chair Chair Scacchetti? Yes. Motion carried. At this time, I would ask President and CEO Corbett to present his monthly report. Uh, thank you. Good evening, Chair, members of the board, and good evening to all members of the public joining us uh, online tonight. Uh, as in previous months, I'll begin with NJ Transit's COVID-related statistics, and I'm pleased to note that the number of NJ Transit employees currently positive with COVID-19 has once again decreased since our last board meeting. Uh, 23 employees out of approximately 12,000 are currently positive for COVID, down from 36 at our last board meeting. However, consistent with the rest of the state, those numbers are beginning to creep up a bit from our low earlier this month. Reminder that the pandemic is still not over and we need to remain vigilant. <clears throat> On a positive note, we are seeing significant ridership gains in some areas exceeding our initial projections. Average weekday rail ridership, which we reported last month had increased to 30 to 35 percent of pre-COVID levels, has increased yet again to approximately 50 percent over the past several weeks. Average rail ridership on weekends has climbed to approximately 80 percent on some recent weekends, up from 40 to 50 percent we reported last month. Intrastate bus ridership has risen to 60 to 65 percent of pre-pandemic levels, up from last month's report of approximately 55 percent, with interstate ridership into New York up hey, to approximately 50 percent. Hey, you went to Chair A this morning. Let's put on Maxwell. Wait, please mute, mute your phone. Please mute your phone. Thanks, Joyce. Uh, interstate bus ridership has risen to 60 to 65% of pre-pandemic levels, up from last month's report of approximately 55%, with 
with interstate ridership into New York up to approximately 50 percent, up from 40 to 45 percent reported last month. Light rail ridership is also up uh, to approximately 60 percent of pre-COVID levels system-wide from approximately 55 percent reported last month. I would also note on the personal side, uh, New Jersey Transit has begun repopulating its uh, general office building and headquarters, and it has really been uh, great seeing so many uh, friendly, familiar faces back in the office. So uh, uh, we're feeling it at, at uh, headquarters as well. Um, and it really does be, it make a difference being in person. Uh, last month also brought additional indications that we're coming out of the other side of this pandemic. More than 5 million New Jerseyans are now fully vaccinated, surpassing Governor Murphy's ambitious statewide vaccination goals. And on June 4th, the governor officially ended the COVID-19 related public health emergency. This has resulted in the easing of restrictions on our transit system. Last month, based on the high state vaccination rates, new guidance from the CDC and the TSA, and aligned with Governor Murphy's Executive Order 241 regarding outdoor public spaces, New Jersey Transit lifted the requirements for customers to wear masks outside on our system. To be clear, the TSA's indoor mask requirements remain in effect, and masks are still required for customers indoors throughout our system and on NJ Transit vehicles and within indoor stations and waiting rooms. Additionally, Something many have asked about, all station waiting rooms that have been closed since the onset of the pandemic will be reopening on Tuesday, September 7th. As you, knew, as, as you know, waiting rooms with, with staff ticket windows have been open since September 2020. All of these restrictions being listed and eased are due in large part to the incredible progress New Jersey has made in vaccination distribution. As the governor has continued to stress, we encourage everyone who has not yet been vaccinated to get, get out and get your shot. And remember, NJ Transit's Vax Ride program is still available for those who need transportation to an avail available vaccination site. By visiting njtransit.com slash VaxRide, we not only show you how to get the vaccination sites through the state on our transit system, we provide you two free round trips to our Vax Ride program, so there's no longer any excuse to remain unvaccinated. And to remain aligned with the TSA's indoor mask directive, on June 17th and yesterday, July 20th, we had our seventh and eighth mass force distribution efforts where employees throughout our organization volunteered at several stations and onboard vehicles. To date, we have distributed nearly 100,000 masks overall, including masks distributed during all mass force events at customer service and ticket offices throughout our system. Our New Jersey Transit Police Department also reigns out in force through the system, continuing to conduct their mass compliance details and providing masks to anyone who needs one. As we continue to, to make our system as safe and customer-friendly as possible, on June 30th, we updated our policy on personal, personal vehicles to allow e-bikes, e-scooters, and hoverboards aboard New, New Jersey Transit vehicles. The use of these vehicles now fall under our existing bicycle policy found at njtransit.com slash bikes, which details when and where such vehicles are now permitted. We believe this policy change will serve as yet another way to encourage customers com to come back to transit while both supporting and facilitating the use of environmentally friendly transit options for first mile, last mile travel. It also reflects our vision and our values as we work in line with Governor Murphy's energy master plan and to support one of the five overarching goals in our strategic plan and JT 2030 to promote a more sustainable future for our planet. Uh, we received more good news for our environment last month, which supports and advances our commitment to transitioning to 100% zero emission bus fleet by 2040. On June 25th, NJ Transit was awarded a $5.15 million grant from the FTA's low or no emission grant program to purchase new electric buses. These new buses will be in addition to our upcoming purchase of eight electric buses for our Camden deployment at the end of the year. This new grant, along with $2.2 million match, will go towards the purchase of additional eight battery electric buses to be deployed on our number 25 line between Irvington and Newark. It also complements our plans to upgrade our Hilton garage in Maplewood with charging infrastructure to accommodate new electric buses serving the greater Newark area. Speaking of this plan, the state is also helping us to implement the necessary upgrades to our Hilton garage through a mem mem me, memorandum of understanding, an MOU, with the New Jersey Board of Public Utilities, which was signed earlier this month. The way of background, in March 2020, NJ Transit applied for an FDA grant of approximately $7 million to support our goal of 100% zero emission bus fleet by 2040. In our application, we committed approximately $3 million 
and the BPU, in support of Governor Murphy's Energy Master Plan, back their application with an additional commitment of up to $10 million for the Hilton Garage upgrades. New Jersey Transit introduced another environmental-friendly initiative last month, Transit to Trails, which launched an interactive, user-friendly web application that easily identifies the many New Jersey parks and green spaces accessible by public transportation. The site, njtransit.com slash trails, links NJ Transit services to more than 60 national, state, and county parks, encouraging customers to use environmentally friendly public transportation options when planning to enjoy the great outdoors. Customers can search prospective destinations by park name or view a virtual map of the state with different park locations. Service options for each of these areas and directions are accessible from a pop-up that appears at each access point. Results feature bus, rail, and light rail operations within two miles of the desired parks to all 21 New Jersey counties. What could be a better way as we emerge from the pandemic than using New Jersey Transit as a convenient and cost-effective option to access the great outdoors? As we work to protect our environment, we continue to reinforce our commitment to safety as a top priority. As some of you may know, June was National Safety Month, which provides us with a perfect opportunity to celebrate our safety-related accomplishments and to recommit ourselves to creating the safest possible travel environment for our customers and our employees. We have, present, we have plenty to celebrate this year, as many of our safety-related statistics show marked improvement. NJ Transit's employee injury rate for all employees is down 20% since 2019. Reportable collisions continue to decrease on our bus and light rail systems. Bus collisions are down 20%, and light rail collisions are down 44% to the first half of 2021 compared to 2019. On rail, we had a zero FRA reportable main, main line collisions, meaning throughout our entire passenger system in 2019, 2020, and year to date. There's no coincidence that in January of 19, we hired Brian Lapp as our chief safety officer, and I would be remiss if I failed to give him a big shout out for leading the, the charge on these improvements. Brian was recently named a rising star of 2021 by Progressive Railroading, and we at New Jersey Transit are very proud of him and grateful for his and his team's successful efforts to keep our customers and employees safe. I also want to thank all our employees, particularly our bus, rail, and light, light rail employees, for taking safety so seriously, incorporating it into their culture of the daily work routines. As part of Safety Month, NJ Transit also published two new videos, both available on our YouTube channel, to acknowledge all those employees who put safety first at all times while coming up with new and innovative ways to make our system even safer. One video highlights the extraordinary efforts of our employees to keep themselves, their families, and our customers safe during the pandemic, including why they wear a mask and chose to get vaccinated. The other thanks employees for all their work to promote and improve safety at every moment throughout the year. The videos are named NJ Transit Employee Thank You and COVID Safe, I Wear My Mask, I Got the Shot, and I encourage everyone listening today to take a look at NJ Transit's YouTube channel. In addition to recognizing employees, we host various safety events throughout the month, some for employees to reinforce safety strategies, and others for our customers to remind them of the importance of safety protocols when it's stationed, using mass transit, or even driving near railroad crossings. Also, in regard to safety, I'm pleased to note that NJ Transit has met all the conditions that had end-of-year deadlines and for which we are solely responsible laid out in the FRA's December 2020 certification of our positive train control project. All other conditions to be completed in coordination with other railroads remain on track to be achieved as prescribed by the FRA. Another important objective for PTC moving forward is a standardization of the system across railroads throughout the country. There are currently more than five variations of PTC systems nationwide. For example, a train traveling between Raritan and New York City actually has to go three different PTC systems, New Jersey Transit, Conrail, and Amtrak, posing significant interoperability challenges. The future of PTC nationally is to have one unified system for all railroads. Some refer to it as PTC 2.0, that is similar to the FAA's safety system for airlines. New Jersey Transit is currently helping lead this effort by working closely with the FRA, Northeast Corridor Commission, and other major commuter and freight railroads to establish this type of national standard for PTC. It is also important to note that while PTC is up and running, it will still require significant and ongoing investments as the FRA mandates additional enhancements. We are working with the FRA, Amtrak, and other rail industry leaders to determine the timing and potential funding sources for these investments going forward. 
As part of both NJ Transit's commitment to safety and our efforts to leverage technology to improve every aspect of the customer experience, last what, month we introduced a new life-saving partnership with the mobile app traffic navigation app, Waze. Through this new partnership, drivers using Waze are now automatically alerted, both audibly and visually, through a banner on the app when they, when they near a railroad crossing anywhere throughout the state. This new feature should enhance our efforts to keep these crossings safe. Speaking of technology, we also continue to regularly update our mobile app, adding features and functionality to improve the customer experience. In fact, many of these updates are a direct result of customer feedback. Last month, we launched Map My Ride, which allows customers to track their location of their bus or train with a simple tap on their mobile device. Customers can now see the location of their bus or train on a map, along with the estimated arrival time to the location. The mobile app update also provides enhanced integration with our new NJT Rewards Program, where customers earn points for deals and discounts at local businesses, which, incidentally, now has more than 60 participating businesses and, or, and organizations and more than 30,000 customers, up more than 20,000 since our last board meeting. Customers can now use the mobile app to access other great deals through our deals and discount program at njttransit.com slash deals. Finally, the upgrade improves bus and light rail mobile app ticket compatibility with our new onboard bus validators and light rail platform validators. Our codes have been moved to the top of the mobile app tickets, making it easier for customers presenting digital tickets and passes in portrait mode while, accel while accelerating boarding times. Moving on to infrastructure, NJ Transit continued to aggressively advance our ambitious $17 billion capital plan. As the adoption of our capital plan update, along with the FY22 authorization to secure capital funding, is on our agenda this evening, I'd like to take this opportunity to highlight four, <clears throat> excuse me, four projects in the plan, each with an upcoming milestone. First, as I'm sure you'll all remember, in November 2019, Board Chair Gutierrez Cachetti led the introduction of our innovation challenge to solicit transportation solutions to improve connectivity between Sokolka Station, MetLife Stadium, and the American Dream Complex. The kickoff event was attended by 140 individuals representing 54 private public entities. This year, in February, we issued an RFP to develop an inventive and original solution for our goal to provide more robust and sustainable public transportation across this critical transit link. We will be coming to the board soon to seek authorization to award our selected design consultant to spearhead this effort. We're also excited to continue advancing our bus garage modernization project. We advertised an RFP project on May 25th with the submissions received earlier this month. We're beginning the process of the technical evaluation on the proposals. The RFP is for conceptual, preliminary, and final engineering services for phase one of the program. Phase one involves a system-wide survey of all 16 garages and design and construction assistance services for the installation of charging stations at our Hilton Garage in Maplewood. It's an extremely important component of our work in transitioning to a zero emission bus fleet in line with Governor Murphy's clean energy goals and statutory procurement deadlines. We anticipate being before the board for an authorization to award the phase one contract this fall. Next, despite the challenges posed by COVID, staff at NJ Transit have been working hard, particularly on those projects that can be transformative to some of our communities. One such project is replacement and expansion of the Walter Rand Transportation Center in Camden. Murphy administration is committed to the continued renaissance of Camden and the Walter Rand Center is a critical component of this revival, not just to, for today, but to accommodate anticipated growth throughout the Camden County. We released an RFP this year in April that not only allows for a phased approach, but also for an innovative public partner, public private partnership to advance this project. Our staff held a virtual pre-proposal conference and we anticipate seeking, seeking board authorization to award a contract this fall as well. And lastly, as a reminder, final bids for our $1.8 billion Portal North Bridge project are due on September 2nd, and we anticipate having an update on this important project at an upcoming board meeting. Through the advancement of these projects, it's not hard to see how New Jersey Transit has advanced millions of dollars in capital projects since 2018, even as other transit agencies across the country reduced or even suspended their capital plans and projects amid the pandemic. In addition to the benefits uh, to service reliability and the customer experience, these projects will also be integral to the state's economic recovery as we come out of the pandemic. New Jersey Transit's 
Speaking uh, along the line of infrastructure, New Jersey Transit proudly helped launch a new infrastructure plan undertaken by the Northeast Quarter Commission at a press conference I attended last week at Moynihan Station in my role both as president and CEO of New Jersey Transit and as the co-chair of the, of the commission. There I joined FTA and FRA administrators Nuria Fernandez and Amit Bose, along with Amtrak President Stephen Gardner and other members of the commission to introduce a new plan that will significantly improve service along the entire Northeast Quarter. Connect NEC 2035, or C35 as it's commonly referred to, is an ambitious $117 billion plan that would transform and modernize the Northeast Quarter, the busiest and most vital stretch of infrastructure in the country. This transformation is already underway through two of the most significant projects on the NEC in a generation, NJ Transit's Portal North Bridge Replacement Project and the Hudson Tunnel Project, which are both part of the overall gateway program. While the Portal North and Hudson Tunnel projects are certainly critical, the NEC is aligned with aging assets from Washington, D.C. to Boston, bridges and tunnels, and infrastructure dating back to the 1800s with track, signal, and power systems that are beyond their useful life. These aging assets are prone to breakdown and cause service disruptions. And because the NEC is such a complex and heavily used system, a delay for one train can mean ripple effects up and down the entire Northeast Corridor and beyond. Now, however, through C-35, we have a detailed, comprehensive plan to ensure better service for our customers and our region's success moving forward. When completed, C-35 will achieve significant progress on improving service and eliminating the state of good repair backlog while keeping Amtrak and our region's commuter rail services running safely and reliably. As we work to improve service, capacity, and reliability on the NEC, we are also advancing the complementary sustainability and smart growth transit-oriented development along the corridor as well. Last week, New Jersey Transit joined with the Murphy administration to announce the advancement of a major TOD project at our Metro Park station in Woodbridge as part of our ongoing commitment to promote sustainable economic growth. Last year, NJ Transit solicited statements of qualifications and expressions of interest in 12 acres located directly adjacent to Metro Park station. This year, on July 15th, we released a request for proposal to the four finalists who successfully submitted responses to that request. The site is envisioned for a transformative mixed-use development that will foster better access to employment centers, transportation, fewer greenhouse gas emissions, and a healthier, more envir environmentally friendly community. Metro Park is one of the many TOD projects New Jersey Transit is helping to facilitate around the state, including Morristown, Aberdeen, Matawan, Somerville, Orange, Jersey City, and along the River Line and other locations throughout the state. For NJ Transit, the development of TOD communities not only means new opportunities to generate revenue by optimizing real estate values around our public transportation hubs, but also to meet the state's economic and environmental goals. Finally, I'd like to wrap up today with another great example of a frontline New Jersey Transit employee who went well beyond, above and beyond the call of duty. On June 28th, a group of 21 children were on a school bus traveling over the George Washington Bridge when two of the bus's tires blew out. The bus was disabled and the school children were stuck on the bridge. The long wait for a tow truck began. But luckily for them, NJ Transit bus operator James Azir happened to be driving by with an empty New Jersey Transit bus on his way to the George Washington Bridge bus terminal to pick up commuters for their homeward bound journey. Bus operator Azir drove over to the scene and working with the Port Authority police, loaded the children and the chaperones onto his bus. He then drove them all safely to the GW Bridge Bus, bus station where they could be picked up by their family members. James Azir's actions on that day were outside of the normal duties of his job, but demonstrated the kindness, compassion, and commitment to service so many of our employees exhibit every day. NJT applauds his quick thinking and willingness to jump in and help the communities we serve. And with that, Chair, I conclude my remarks and turn the floor back to you. Thank you for that very comprehensive report, Kevin. At this time, operator, we would like to open the floor for public comments. Can you please provide instructions for entering the queue to make a public comment? Certainly. Ladies and gentlemen, the floor is now open for public comments. If you would like to make a public comment, please press star one on your telephone keypad to enter the queue. You will hear a brief tone to indicate you have successfully entered the queue. Priority access will be given to any participant who has pre-registered, and these comments will be taken in turn. We will then take public comments from remaining participants on a first-come, first-served basis. Each person will have three minutes for their public comment. 
a warning will be provided with one minute remaining and again with 15 seconds remaining. Once again, please press star one on your telephone keypad now to enter the queue to make a public comment. At this time, there are 11 participants on the call who have queued to make a public comment. And the first public comment will be coming from Sally Jane Gellert. Sally, your line is live and your time will begin now. Hi, thank you. Uh, Sally Jane Gellert, uh, Chairperson of the Lackawanna Coalition. Uh, last month I mentioned that the Lackawanna Coalition Secretary Daniel Chazen has reported on the quote, continuing saga of the 1249 train to Middletown, the confusion called by a 1245 and a 1249 train on the same track in Sea Caucus Junction. Our group discussed the issue, decided the solution might be to move the 1249 train across the platform. Randy Glucksman, the MTA's official Rockland County Rider representative, offered to make some calls, and shortly thereafter we learned that the switch had been made. Daniel reported that the situation improved. We thank New Jersey Transit for quickly implementing this common sense solution to make rider stays a little easier. We thank Randy for his efforts, and we emphasize the value of working together to find solutions. We hope that we all consider ourselves part of a transit team to ensure that the system works as well as possible, and as always, offer our assistance, advice, and feedback. Uh, another problem, though. Colleagues on the Atlantic City Line report that when a Philadelphia train does not actually complete the trip and the final leg is made on a substitute bus, that bus leaves passengers across a complex intersection from the 30th Street station without even a traffic light. This is especially difficult for those with limited vision or mobility issues. Passengers required to transfer to a bus should not be further challenged by their drop-off location, and we encourage you to work with station management to find a better solution. Uh, my written presentation, which I am late in submitting, you'll get it very shortly, includes a, short of, a chart of New Jersey City office occupancy, which shows that despite a recent uptick, occupancy rates are only 20% of pre-pandemic levels. This is not unique to you. Unique to New York, of course, and Boston, San Francisco regional systems and others are running more consistent service all day, minimizing the rush hour concentration of service, spreading trains out throughout the day. Although we expect that rush offices, that offices will rebound, we had just heard Mr. Corbett mention that the weekend rail service is at 80% of normal, a greater increase than other times, and we see a great benefit remaining. in equalizing service around the clock, enabling residents to use transit for more than just to and from work. Um, rather than approving an actual budget, today's item continues spending budget based on last year's practices. Certainly better than canceling trains and buses while the budget's finalized, but no, no way to run a, a government or an agency. We look forward to New Jersey Transit having a more predictable funding source and a more stable financial picture. North Jersey News re reported today that the Moody's has upgraded the state's credit, including a positive outlook on the Transportation Trans Trust Fund debt. We are pleased by the upgrade, but note that the state budget drastically cut New Jersey transit subsidies, relying on federal money and New Jersey turnpike funds. As always, the coalition supports dedicated funding for transit so that the agency is no longer dependent on the annual budget cycle. Fifteen seconds. Uh, please check on um, multi cars, uh, multi level car windows that are translucent, not transparent, and wheels out of true. We've noticed an increase in both of those, and maintenance is important. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next public comment is coming from Ken Dolsky. Ken, your line is live and your time will begin now. Uh, good evening, thank you very much. Um, the most significant issue that's going to determine the degree to which the New Jersey Transit Grid Project uses renewable energy is the availability of space for solar panels. We have raised this issue repeatedly, yet New Jersey Transit has given us no reason to believe that it is addressing any aspect of this issue as any customer requesting bids on solar power would normally do. When we encouraged you in 2019 to address this with the potential bidders, the response was that this was something renewable energy providers should work out for themselves. This is an extremely complex project. The solar power needed will make it the largest solar project of the state by a considerable margin. New Jersey Transit will likely require 90 megawatts of power or more. Given the geography and development of the area, many sites will be required for solar production. Determining the applicability of each site will be a project by itself. Projects like these require close collaboration 
between providers and buyers, many issues will arise that will require evaluations of trade-offs and new decisions by both parties as details of the project unfold. We need to understand what, if anything, the Jersey Transit is doing in this regard. Neither the buyer nor the provider can do this all by themselves. Both have to participate cooperatively and proactively. New Jersey Transit must describe its overall plan for addressing this solar siding issue. We expect you to claim that it's confidential under the rules of procurement. However, we're not looking for specific information on any property. We simply want to know how you plan to handle this. Are you going to do a preliminary study of all siding options in the area? Are you only going to analyze your own options? Are you, are you going to offer nothing and ask each of the RFP bidders to do their own analysis, or do you have some other approach? We would, be, we would be very concerned if New Jersey Transit was to say that you're not going to provide any information to help the bidders with this aspect of the project. We think this would be a very poor approach. It will make it much more difficult for bidders to offer high-quality, realistic proposals incorporating solar power and will lead to a suboptimal renewable energy solution. Uh, so we are looking for information from New Jersey Transit as to how it plans to address the solar siding issues for New Jersey Transit grid. Um, if you don't provide any information on this, um, we will have to assume that you're not doing anything, and we will we will have to try and uh, you know address that appropriately. Thank you. Thank you. The next public comment is coming from Andy Weiss. Andy, your line is live, and your time will begin now. Good evening, board. Uh, I just would like to talk to you about. Uh, a regional fare card. Um, NJ Transit does not have a regional fare card. We have this obsolete conduit system, like the standalone system. We need a regional fare card that is used all over the country. Uh, it was recommended. I want their press to, to understand that this was recommended by the NJ Transit audit, chapter 5, page 99. Again, the regional fare card was recommended by the NJ Transit audit Chapter 5, page 99. Also, four North Jersey Planning Authority studies recommended a regional fare card. Kevin Corbett and Diane are on that board. The studies are Plan 2045, NJ Transit Greater Newark Bus Study, Northwest New Jersey Bus Study, and Go Farther 27 Bus Study uh, recommended a regional fare card. That's also now including the NJ Transit audit, the audit of NJ Transit. Where is the regional fare card that we're supposed to have that was recommended by the million-dollar audit by Governor Murphy? Governor Murphy, your audit recommended this card. I want this in the, in the meeting notes. I want this documented. Governor Murphy, your own NJ Transit Audit recommended a regional fare card. Where is it? Where is this? Four studies from the North Jersey Transportation Planning Authority that Diane and Kevin are on recommended a regional fare card. Why are we still sticking with conduit? Why are we going alone? PATH is moving to the MTA Omni system in 2022. We need to connect with the MTA Omni system, have one regional fare card. This makes sense. They're doing this all over the nation. NJ Transit also had a study, a study in 2010. One minute remaining. The NJ Transit had a study in 2010 with the MTA and PATH. And I want the press to listen to this. They also had a study. It was called Ride NYNJ. It was called the New York, New Jersey Transit Study. It was successful. The Port Authority said it was successful. Former Executive Director Jim Weinstein said this is going to be a giant step for us. He's on video saying it. Where is our regional fare card, Diane and Kevin? You're on that board, NJTPA board. Where is our regional fare card? This will also bring in more federal funding. We're going to bring in more, more passengers. That's per your audit. Your audit says this. It's going to bring more passengers, more federal funding. Why are you not? Fifteen seconds for me. Why, why are you ignoring your own NJ Transit audit? This is taxpayer, million-dollar taxpayer audit. Why are you ignoring it? We need regional fare cards now. Thank you. The next public comment is coming from Sam DeFalco. Sam, your line is live, and your time will begin now.
Sam DeFalco, your line is now live. Please make sure it's not muted on your end. Once again, your Sam DeFalco, your line is now live, and your time will begin now. Once again, Sam DeFalco, if you are currently connected, it is your turn for public comment. Um, sorry, were you able to hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now, Sam. You're, it's your uh, turn for public comment. You may begin now. Okay, sorry about that. Um, yeah, my name is Sam DeFalco. I'm with Food and Water Watch, um, representing our 70,000 members and supporters this evening. I um, want to start off by thanking New Jersey Transit for your ongoing commitment to sustainability and for um, transitioning the uh, transit grid project away from a full-time natural gas plant to um, something uh, powered, hopefully, uh, close to 100% um, renewable energy as possible. Um, but I do want to echo the concerns of the previous speaker, Ken Dolsky, about the uh, lack of information about solar siting. Um, and yeah, that this, um, in order for this project to be done successfully with the maximum amount of renewables, it is critical that those uh, bidders do get information from transit about the use of, of solar siting in, in the tiny area, um, both on New Jersey transit property and um, in other places where based on roofs and on other lots can be leased. Um, it is really critical that this information is given and that um, where the public is, is told how this information is being um, conducted and uh, shared with bidders. Um, yeah, so that's um, pretty much all, all I have to say this evening, um, but really would urge you to um, let the public know uh, what, what the plan is about that, because it really is what's going to um, make this project be able to be as renewable as possible. Thank you. Thank you. The next public comment is coming from William Daly. William, your line is live and your time will begin now. Good evening. Thank you for this time. Uh, I am a 77-year-old uh, disabled rider of New Jersey Transit. I love taking the train. Uh, I used to take it 20 to 30 times a, a year, I should say, because of the pandemic. Now we're cut down. But I want to discuss very quickly, if I can, uh, the, uh, if there are any regulations or protocol for conductor uh, protocols, basically dealing with the disabled. Uh, just taking you through a ride, I will get that Chicago station, get my ticket, get down onto the platform, train pulls in, I will raise my wheelchair from the rear, I am a little bit ambulatory, raise the wheel up to get over the uh, gap, get on the train, on the uh, uh, Double-decker trains, it's, it's uh, like mana from heaven. It's great to get on, get right to the seats. I pull back and I sit down. It's a lot of anxiety in the single-decker trains because you're stuck in a small little compartment as you enter, pressing the button to open the door. Uh, the seats are on the left, right-hand side. Uh, it's just difficult then getting up and getting off and, and hoping you get off on time so that the train doesn't leave without you, which has happened on, well, we're close to happened on a couple of occasions. Uh, when the train pulls into Secaucus, I will notice that uh, I let usually let everybody else get on besides myself. Uh, I do have my own seat when I come on. It should all be taken. And I notice the conductors in the, in the different areas to my right and left who are standing outside the train. Uh, when I get to Hamilton, which is the only spot that I go to, uh, I will get off. Uh, my main focus, of course, is getting off safely, so uh, I don't have the opportunity at that time to look up and down to see if the conductors are uh, outside looking for incoming passengers or outgoing passengers. Uh, about a month ago, uh, it happened that uh, I was on a single-decker train and got up. I uh, can't get up until the train stops because I'm going to wind up falling. Uh, I opened the, I pressed the uh, open the door button, got in, and as I got, to leave, as I got to leave the train, the door closed on me, uh, on my chair, closed again the second time. The conductor came from where I don't know, uh, but he did arrive, so I'll take care of it, took out a key. Uh, the, the question is, basically, is there any protocol for conductors who may see someone who is disabled getting on the train, following through with procedures to make sure this person gets on and off, is safe, uh, 
I could go on a little further. I'd like to, so I'm going to have to cut it short, uh, not having the time. I, just, I wish to thank you. I'm just going to put an idea in your head, and I know I'm going to show up at one of your meetings and be a little more explicit. Thank you. 15 seconds. Bye. Operator? Operator? Yes. It's the chair. Um, I would just ask if we could um, perhaps maintain the contact information for that individual so uh, Mr. Greco may get in touch with him directly. Absolutely. I'll definitely share that with the team after the call. Thank you. Certainly. And the next public comment is coming from Rachel Davis. Rachel, your line is live and your time will begin now. Thank you so much. Good evening to the board and everyone else in attendance. I'm speaking on behalf of Water Spirit, which is a nonpartisan nonprofit ministry of the Sisters of St. Joseph of Peace. Given the repeated messages from the strong effort calling for renewables, solar siting in particular, I am curious to know what is the response. And my question is, is there a rationale for choosing to hold off on renewable energy being a very clear part of the beginning of the process to bidders before the bid process begins. Uh, and then will the people overseeing the project ensure renewable energy is the source through some iterations? It would take probably some iterations, so is that, is that the, the plan? Uh, clarification would definitely help. Solar can be patchworked and creatively installed, as was mentioned earlier. When paired with other technologies, solar significantly reduces the wasting of the life-giving source that is water. And the sky was orange yesterday, and I guess it's going to be again tomorrow. The climate emergency is here, and we must make sure young people have a viable future. So projects like this that really have a chance at being 100% solar, mixed renewables, surely can't be too difficult for adults to figure out. And I urge New Jersey Transit to describe its overall plan for addressing the solar siting issue. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. The next public comment is coming from Tim Sevener. Tim, your line is live and your time will begin now. And Tim Sevener's line has just disconnected. The next public comment is Elizabeth Nadoy. Elizabeth, your line is live and your time will begin now. Good evening, my name is Elizabeth Nadoy and I'm a member of the Don't Ask the Meadowlands Coalition and a resident of Hoboken. I'm here tonight out of a sense of extreme frustration. Several months ago, I believe that New Jersey Transit was committed to stopping the construction of a frack gas power plant in Kearney at Copper's Cove. Just minutes from my home of 40 years and the homes and workplaces of many friends, neighbors, and residents in Hoboken and the surrounding cities. I believed in your promises to build an alternative energy power plant to protect the lives of many innocent and vulnerable people. But since then, I have begun to doubt the strength and sincerity of this commitment. We have repeatedly asked Transit to research the availability of solar sites in the surrounding land at Copper's Coke, only to be told that this is not a job for New Jersey Transit, but a responsibility of the bidders making their renewable energy proposal. The onus should not be on the contractors to find the private owners adjacent to Copper's Coke, but on New Jersey Transit itself. Some solar siting can be done on New Jersey Transit property, but it will not be nearly enough. New Jersey Transit must work with both public and private entities that own adjacent rooftops and properties to locate enough space to create enough solar sites to generate the necessary amount of required power. This kind of research and business outreach and networking is a major undertaking in and of itself. It should not be an additional requirement of the environmental engineers attempting to create the clean energy plan to power your resiliency plan. For example, landfill, is, landfill is immediately adjacent to the Copper's Coke site. Can't New Jersey Transit co-partner with the New Jersey Sports and Entertainment Authority and find ways to place solar panels on this unused land. 
We call on New Jersey Transit to do the right thing and find the ways and means to use all available brownfields, industrial roofs, parking lots, landfills, etc. Find and site as much space as necessary to create the alternative energy plant that is required. We have only 10 years left to put the brakes on this climate crisis that we are now living through. We need to take the right steps now, not throw up roadblocks. 15 blocks. seconds remaining. Continue to endanger the lives of vulnerable people in our overburdened environmental justice communities. We have to present the loss of one more person from the effects of air pollution. Thank you very much. Thank you. And the next public comment is coming from Tim Sevener. Tim, your line is live and your time will begin now. Hello, yeah, this is Tim Sevener from the New Jersey Association of Real Passengers and also a supporter of Don't Gas the Metal Lands. Um, the first, first point is with the issue of solar siting. Um, one, of the, one of the questions I've had before is that uh, it's very commendable, and I think it's really good for, for passengers like William Daly, for the disabled, for um, fast boarding and, and inboarding, that, that there's all these station improvements. I believe there were 21 uh, where they're going to be raised platforms. But, for example, for the Metro Park, you have 12 acres of transit-oriented development. That is a perfect spot to also put solar, which could be part of the New Jersey transit grid supply. Another place is the, as I've said before, and the bidder should know this, is to do a solar tunnel uh, when you come into Newark Broad Street from the Morris Line and from the uh, Bruton Line, which it, it, it goes below. You just put solar panels above just like the Belgian solar tunnel. Another possibility is right next to Orange. We're also doing a transit-oriented development, although I'm, I'm really leery that there's 410 units and none of them are affordable housing, which should be part of the point of transit-oriented development, is right next to that is 280, which has acres. I identified this to the um, New Jersey Transit, where you could also do a solar tunnel put solar panels over 280 where it goes below the, the rail and, and it goes below ground. Uh, there's a number of bridges where it could be done. So that, that, that's one issue. There should be definitely possibilities for solar. Another issue, I'm very glad that um, we just found out that, that there's, uh, there's recommendations for a Newark to Patterson Light Rail through uh, Nutley, the NIT um, unused track, or very slightly used track. Uh, that's a good thing. But another thing which is coming up very fast, where New Jersey Transit and NJTTA should be asserting their right on the, F on the Essex Hudson Greenway for, to preserve that rail right of way for rails with trails. That 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 uh, goes through Jersey City, Secaucus, Carney, Newark, Belleville, Bloomfield, Glen Ridge, and Montclair. And that would be really that there's already um, residences going up along that that uh, rail right of way, um, and it should be rails with trails. Um, and and that, that rail right away, Norfolk Southern, is about to sell it off. And if we don't expired. save that, it's going to be gone. Thank you. Thank you. And the next public comment is coming from Adam Wright. Adam, your line is live, and your time will begin now. Thank you, and good evening. First of all, do we have any updates on the customer advocate or the customer advisory board? Are there target dates for filling the vacancies? Is there any effort that can be made to engage those who applied to or may have been selected for the customer advisory board? If you can't provide target dates for addressing these items tonight, can we at least get a commitment to get a concrete update by the September meeting? Next, Metro Park Transit-Oriented Development. 
it's imperative that the agency coordinate with stakeholders on needed improvements in the area, including the eventual developer and the State Department of Transportation. A key improvement that should be made with the development here is the addition of sidewalks along Route 27 connecting towards the residential areas north of the station. Right now, any pedestrian going between the station and a residential area off of Route 27 has to either walk on the shoulder or walk in a grassy area behind a guardrail. Sidewalks should be put in in the future. Provision should be made for that. Similarly, the project should be done in a way that preserves space for future right-of-way and station improvements, including potentially straightening the northeast quarter line at this location, adding island platforms to serve all four tracks at the station, and adding an additional pedestrian tunnel or a new pedestrian bridge to improve passenger circulation at the station. Effort should also be made to look at traffic circulation, see if there's anything that can be done to alleviate bottlenecks at night. Moving on, an important issue as a rider right now on the Northeast Corridor Line is mask enforcement. On off-peak and reverse-peak trains, crews have the ability to close off cars. Often you will see crew members disappear into these cars, which means they're not there to enforce the mask policy, and they can't easily be brought in to resolve issues if they're disappearing for long stretches of the time. I would suggest temporarily replacing quiet cars with mask priority remaining. cars. Make it so that you have a crew member posted there when not assisting with boarding or alighting or when not collecting tickets to prioritize enforcement in these cars, give us a dedicated location where those of us with legitimate concerns about unmasked passengers can go to. Right now it's often a harrowing exercise to find a car that doesn't have somebody unmasked or partially unmasked. Train crews need masks for distribution to passengers too. Not every station and staff, you don't have the NJTVD on every train. It's a logical distribution point. On Monday, I was on a train where an unmasked passenger boarded in New Brunswick. If not for a passenger with extra masks, we would have all been sharing that space with this passenger for 15 minutes or more until we got 15 to seconds remaining. New Jersey Transit Police should also be put on more trains to enforce the mandate. Earlier this month, I was on a train where a passenger became confrontational when I politely asked him to pull his mask off. The crew wouldn't intervene. I got off of that train because I didn't feel safe. I got on a second train, and another passenger similarly became abusive when I made that same polite request. More needs to be done on the mask mandate and soon. People's lives are at stake. Lastly, I do want to thank staff for their assistance in addressing my concerns on that particular incident. I, I do want to thank you. The next public comment is coming from Talia Crawford. Talia, your line is live and your time will begin now. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Talia Crawford, the new campaign organizer for the Tri-State Transportation Campaign. Uh, I'm looking forward to working with New Jersey riders and NJ Transit to make service more reliable, uh, affordable, and accessible. And thank you for the opportunity to provide a public comment before the board tonight. So as we enter this new fiscal year and the authorization process, uh, we would like to emphasize the instability of continuing the practice of capital transfers to the operating budget to pursue preventative maintenance projects. Uh, capital transfers have cumulative cumulatively resulted in a loss of over uh, $10 billion, delaying expansion and new infrastructure projects like the electric bus fleet. Uh, so continuing with these raids, uh, even though they are contextually uh, the lowest they've ever been, uh, will continue to stifle the agency. And without identifying dedicated and sustainable operating funding, riders will continue to be the one to carry the burden of fare hikes and service cuts. So NJ Transit needs stable and dedicated revenue for operating so that it can meet its capital needs, especially those projects identified in the agency's five-year capital program. Uh, we also urge a swift revolution regarding the federal ARP funding dis discussion between New Jersey, New York, and Connecticut uh, that is currently holding up the disbursement of funds. Uh, we understand and appreciate how critical uh, the emergency funding 
federal funding is for all states, and we are hoping that there is a fair and equitable resolution that does not expose New Jersey Transit's riders, uh, especially those who are transit dependent, to, cut, to service cuts or uh, fare increases. So New Jersey Transit must get the proper funding that our federal de- delegation fought hard to bring back to our state. Uh, lastly, we applaud NJ Transit for pursuing the Trans-Hudson Interstate uh, Survey, and we would love to have an ongoing dialogue with you uh, to see how this plays out, specifically focusing on the recovery of transportation in a post-COVID world and the connectivity to the intrastate mobility and mobility throughout the region. And again, thank you for your time, and I'm looking forward to working with all of you in the future uh, to assure New Jersey residents are afforded the access to public transit that they deserve and need. Thank you very much. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, the public comment period is currently open. Anybody who would like to join the queue to make a public comment may press star one on their telephone keypad at this time. Once again, if you would like to join the public comment queue, you may press star one on your telephone keypad at this time to join the queue. And at this time, five public comments remain in queue. And the next public comment is coming from Doug O'Malley. Doug, your line is live and your time will begin now. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Doug O'Malley, Director with Empowerment New Jersey. And obviously, uh, you know, you, the board has already heard uh, the squeaky wheel of the importance of dedicated funding. Uh, that obviously, uh, that call was made crystal clear by the Senate Majority Leader Loretta Weinberg and more than 10 uh, legislators uh, urging their legislative leadership as well as the governor to work to move to end uh, the raids of the capital. A capital operating program that's existed for way, way too many years, as well as the raise of clean energy fund. Obviously, uh, the FY22 budget is is now uh, passed and done. Uh, we continue to have those ongoing raids. And just as a reminder, you know, this has been going on for a generation. More than $10 billion has been raided. Uh, this obviously hobbles the ability of the agency to be able to deal with uh, the the needs of capital expansions. Uh, and it's also critical to acknowledge that this is not sustainable. Um, you know, we are obviously thankful that ridership is starting to rebound, as, as heard from President Corbett. Uh, vaccination rates are, are more than 70 percent. That is a tremendous victory. But obviously, the pandemic will permanently alter the employer-employee work patterns throughout the state and obviously in New York. Uh, and our concern is that even a loss of 20 percent of New Jersey Transit's ridership uh, would equal an annual budget hole of $200 million. That's obviously the best argument of why the agency needs dedicated funding and why we need to end those raids of the Clean Energy Fund. Um, we are heartened by the comments that the $82 million will be uh, focused on electric bus uh, expenses. Obviously, that is a, a critical need uh, that will need capital dollars of, of the $82 million and above and beyond. I also would be remiss here to, to say that we – um, are engaged, and I say we really, the tri-state region is engaged in an incredibly dangerous game of chicken. And specifically, uh, the MTA uh, is is playing uh, fast and loose with the federal dollars from the American Rescue Plan as well as CARISA. The pandemic has been a body blow for all mean? of us and for all public transit systems around the region. But our state should be working together to achieve more federal funding. And instead, New York and the MTA are essentially uh, playing a, a, a game of, of hostage by daring New Jersey and Connecticut to accept a new formula that no other state has uh, has accepted that is not in the FTA, uh, you know, in the FTA guidebook. So we, we are very thankful uh, for the work of this board and uh, the DOT Commissioner Guterres Cassetti for fully standing up for New Jersey and standing up to New York. We're also thankful for the leadership of Senator Booker. There's no reason you, for New York to hold this funding hostage. And in this moment, our state should work together, not be playing chicken. So uh, that is that is a critical moment. New York needs it's to get its act together. And then finally, um, this is where we collectively need to be advocating for funding from the feds as part of the infrastructure package so that we can ensure that public transit and New Jersey transit will be here and stronger not only this year, but in the years to come. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next public comment is coming from Matt Smith. Matt, your line is live and your time will begin now. Good evening, uh, members of the board. My name is Matt Smith. I'm the New Jersey Director for Food and Water Watch. And like 
uh, a number of uh, speakers before me, I too would like to address uh, the New Jersey Transit Grid project and specifically um, the lack of any solar siting plan. You know, this has been quite a long journey for many of us um, in terms of the progress that's been made on the project. You know, going from what looked like uh, a major polluting power plant that, that you know, was going to run full time and, and be located in an environmental justice community to now having a real opportunity to build a state of the art microgrid project using state of the art renewable energy technologies to the maximum extent possible to protect public health after a deadly pandemic and to respond adequately and boldly to a climate crisis. A climate crisis that even since New Jersey Transit announced the new process to um, explore renewable alternatives with the goal to get to as close to 100% renewable as possible for this project, the climate crisis has worsened significantly. So, you know, if anything, we have greater urgency to act. And what we've seen since the, the commitment has really been a lack of meaningful engagement and a lack of information. You know, this solar siting issue is nothing new. Back in 2019, uh, the Don't Gas the Meadowlands Coalition provided New Jersey Transit with a free-of-charge, citizen-conducted solar siting plan that identified sites along New Jersey Transit properties, um, rights-of-way, and other locations where solar could be sited. Um, that was a lot of work and effort done by volunteers. To date, we have never received any confirmation that New Jersey Transit has reviewed that work, um, has provided input or remaining. feedback on whether it's uh, a viable resource for them. And to date, we do not have any information on what New Jersey Transit is doing on their own to identify enough siting locations to build uh, a solar-powered microgrid project for the transit grid um, project. And, you know, we have the federal funding. Uh, we have an administration who um, is committed to achieving these goals. This is... Uh, a critical piece, and we cannot let this slip through our fingers um, and miss out on this opportunity to build uh, a project that our entire state can be proud of and that serves as a model for where the country needs to go to build uh, renewable energy-powered public transit um, that protects seconds. public health and our climate. So we urge New Jersey Transit um, before, well before the next board meeting to, to provide information on the solar siting plan that they are conducting. Thank you. Thank you. The next public comment is coming from William Ritzer. William, your line is live and your time will begin now. Thank you. Good evening to all the meeting participants. Well, on the evening of Saturday, July 17th, I attended a concert at the BB&T Pavilion on the Camden waterfront. I used the river line to travel to and from the venue. The inbound journey was uneventful. The outbound journey, however, proved to be problematic. After 9.30 p.m., a torrential rainstorm moved through the area, continuing for well over an hour. When the event concluded, members of the concert audience made their way through the stormy weather to the Riverline. After approximately 30 minutes, Riverline passengers on the station platform were informed by New Jersey Transit Police that service was suspended and that passengers would need to await the arrival of a replacement bus service. After approximately 10 minutes, a single bus arrived and quickly filled to capacity. Although passengers were told multiple buses would be available, the same bus returned after 20 minutes and then experienced more delays while attempting to board a passenger using the wheelchair lift. Because the bus driver of bus number 5588 attempted to board the passenger from the street instead of curved level, the lift was unable to function properly and intervention by New Jersey Transit Police officers was required to board the wheelchair passenger and retract the lift mechanism. I understand that weather events occur and create significant negative impacts on transit operations and facilities. It is also my understanding that the Riverline service disrupt disruptions between Walter Rand Transportation Center and the Entertainment Center station occur and have occurred for years nearly every time a significant rainfall happens. The outcome of the New Jersey Transit response in this instance is unacceptable. The culture of the organization should be something greater than a best effort approach. 
This evening, I ask the board to use power and responsibility of the oversight assigned to it to make sure that the number of this type of service disruption is reduced and that the response is significantly improved. One minute remaining. I have a few extemporaneous comments. Those of you may recognize me previously representing a passenger rail advocacy organization, although this evening I speak on my own behalf. When incidences like this occur, it makes my job of an, as an advocate that much harder. The job of an advocate, as I see it, is to make New Jersey Transit be the best that it can be. Thank you. Thank you. The next public comment is coming from Brian Frisch. Brian, your line is live and your time will begin now. Hello, and thank you for the opportunity to pro uh, provide public comment this evening. My name is Brian Fritch, and I'm the manager of advocacy campaigns for Regional Plan Association, a 100-year-old research and advocacy nonprofit. I think we all know what it means, uh, to, what NJ Transit means to the state as a vehicle for equity, an economic engine, and a large part of the climate crisis solution. Recognizing that pit the pivotal role it plays for the state and region, we applaud NJ Transit for fully articulating its needs via its 10-year strategic plan and its first five-year capital plan. Those documents ensure the agency can modernize and deliver reliable service all residents deserve. With a favorable administration in the White House, now is an absolutely critical time to invest in the transit infrastructure needed for the future. Yet, unlike comparably sized transit systems around the country, NJ Transit is not supported by a dedicated funding source and is forced to use its capital funding for day-to-day -day operations. This practice perpetuates a cycle of disinvestment and deferred maintenance that takes an ongoing toll on riders through delays and in inadequate conditions on buses and trains. While we were very pleased to see the NJ Turnpike Authority make a significant uh, commitment to funding NJ Transit this year, it's simply not enough. While the action helped reduce the capital to operating transfer by approximately $100 million annually, there is still, however, an incredibly significant gap that must be closed to fully support the agency. We hope all members of this body will actively support the following two major goals and urge state government officials to do the same. First, identify and establish dedicated ongoing funding sources that avert the use of capital and clean energy fund dollars to fill operating budget gaps. These funds should also meet structural increases and transit operating costs that result from uh, established labor contracts, inflation, and other price One increases. Minute remaining. One minute remaining. Also, fully fund uh, NJT's 10-year strategic and five-year capital plans and ensure dedicated funds are directed to operating and capital budgets. It is absolutely essential that we prioritize these efforts and invest in transit over the long term so the uh, agency can effectively plan for its future. If we do not, we will not achieve the sustainability, equity, and economic development goals that the, we know the state has prioritized in order to thrive. Thanks so much for your time and consideration. We look forward to continuing to work with stakeholders to help make these efforts a reality in the coming future. Thank you. And the next comment is coming from Anna Leone. Anna, your line is live and your time will begin now. Hi, my name is Anna Leone and I'd like to uh, thank the board members for their dedication and service. Uh, the topic that I have this evening is uh, with respect to access link for the disabled. Um, I am very thankful that New Jersey Transit has access link, but I must admit that the program definitely needs to be overhauled and to be reevaluated. Um, I've discovered that there are many routes that New Jersey Transit bus lines um, operate. However, Access Link will not go via those routes because I'm told it's a commuter route. And um, I find that a little discouraging. For example, I now have to go for lymphatic treatment three times a week for the next two to three months as a result of the cancer treatment that I had. And the facility is three miles from my home, 
and Access Link will not go down Kinder Kamak Road, which is a main thoroughfare. Um, and there are a lot of uh, medical facilities, doctors, and um, also uh, Pascac Valley Hospital, which is on Old Hook Road. Um, Access Link will not go that route. Although, when I was there, I saw five buses pass within a, a time frame of 10 minutes directly in front of the facility, and um, I was told that those are commuter buses and not local buses. So I really think that in order to serve the disabled, especially when it has to do with medical concerns, we really need to evaluate the program. Um, I know I can take a bus to go to Atlantic City, but yet I cannot take a bus to go um, three miles down the road for a medical necessity. One minute remaining. Okay. Um, so I would appreciate if someone, I'm not sure who in New Jersey Transit is responsible for the routes, if perhaps it could be re-evaluated. That would be a tremendous help, especially now when many of the towns are no longer offering services for the disabled, as well as Bergen County, because of the uh, pandemic. Um, and I really applaud Access Link. I think it's a wonderful program. Also, um, I know they're having difficulty with hiring. Um, if uh, trying to make a reservation via phone, the norm right now is about an hour and 12 minute wait. Um, so if we could look into it, perhaps to hire more individuals, uh, that would also be great. So I appreciate your time and thank you very much for your service and for the opportunity to speak. Thank you. And there are no more participants in the public queue at this time. Thank you, public Thank you, officer. For the record, I received a message from Board Member Gordon. He apologizes that due to another commitment, he had to leave this meeting. I will now ask board members for comments. Board Member Joyce, Adams, Joyce, comments? Joyce, Joyce. Yes. Just before you do that, would we make sure the operator also gets Anthony the information on the last speaker so he can reach out to her? Absolutely. Thank you. You're welcome. Board Member Adams, any comments? Um, yes, Joyce. And I just want to, um, first of all, thank all the speakers for taking the time out of their um, day to give the, um, the board their comments. Um, as a member of the Energy and Sustainability Committee, we take the comments on transit grid to heart, and I'm sure that we're going to get back to you in a timely manner on that. Um, also, on the capital budget and the transfers, um, we're going to talk about that a little bit later. And I'm glad that the chair did acknowledge the, the two speakers, I believe, who had um, individual um, complaints ab about roots. And I, and I want to just remind all the speakers again that the board does take your comments seriously, even though we might not individually address each individual speakers, but we do take your comments very seriously, and we appreciate the time that you spend. Um, that's the end of my comments, Joyce. Thank you. Board Member Doshi, any comments? Yeah, thank you, Joyce. I also wanted to uh, thank everyone who called in today and for your comments. Um, I wanted to thank all the employees, as uh, President Corbett uh, mentioned, who, who are working extra, not really in their job description, you know, um, to make sure um, to talk about how they're vaccinated, to tell people to put masks on. I know um, it's asking a lot of people, but we really appreciate it. And also to the bus driver who helped the students um, that's, so, um, I think, on the bridge. Um, and also, I wanted to say, um, as also a member of the energy and sustainability um, team, we are looking into renewable energy, and uh, we've been discussing a lot of uh, solar panels and options. So we are taking everybody's comments um, seriously, and we will uh, look into it. And um, New Jersey is, Trans is very committed um, to be environmentally friendly. I said uh, another uh, initiative I wanted to highlight was the Transit to Trails um, app. I had to get um, from New Jersey transit stations to our outdoor spaces, trails. And we're looking forward to working with advocates and stakeholders in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Board Member Nara, any comments? 
Thank you, Joyce. Um, just that um, for Mr. Uh, I, I think it was uh, our last speaker, Ms. O'Malley, and also for um, the other speaker, um, who was Mr. Bailey, um, I, I think you'll be very pleased when Anthony Greco uh, or a member of the staff contact you. Um, they're, uh, the staff's really responsive when they hear about issues like this. So um, I, j I just wanted to address several speakers had talked about uh, the need for uh, transit to have dedicated funding. And so just so you know, um, uh, as Board Member Gordon had said, um, many of us have had these conversations and we uh, share your concerns, your very deep concerns about the need for the dedicated funding source uh, so that we don't have to keep um, rating um, where uh, it is not healthy for us to do so. So. Um, we are, many of us are using every opportunity we have when we speak to the legislators to urge them to focus on this issue for the long-term health of um, transit in the state and for the residents. So um, I, I can tell you that we are focusing on that as an issue as well. And I, I did also want to um, specifically say, I think it was Matt Smith um, who uh, from Food and Water Watch spoken about um, a citizen-conducted solar siting plan. I missed when that plan had been submitted, but um, I would just ask if, if that has been, um, you know, if, if it's possible, if maybe we can talk about it later, staff could uh, give us access to that also, because I'd be interested in that. And I know members who are on the, um, on the committee, um, um, Commissioner Doshi and I think Commissioner Gordon probably would be um, would be eager to see that um, because we shouldn't be re reinventing the wheel. And if there's access to information, um, I think it's good for everyone to to have it and to review it. And so, um, so I, I, I echo some of the comments made by the board members previously. And um, I think there was one other comment about. Um, the regional fare card. So I will say, I know Andy Weiss raised it, um, and I will say this, I will do my own research about it. Um, I um, I understand what you're saying about the audit um, and the four planning studies that recommended it, but I'll do some more independent research. Um, and um, maybe we can have a discussion about uh, where that uh, stands uh, within the agency now. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Board Member Rasmussen, any comments? Uh, other than to thank the, uh, the speakers for their time and, uh, and their comments tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Board Member Ashmani, any comments? Len Joyce, thank you. Thank you. Board Member LaRusso, any comments? Just, just echoing um, the other board members on um, you know, appreciation for the time given today during public comment. Um, li listened um, carefully to the comments on the transit grid and also those on mask enforcement uh, on the trains. I know it's not easy for staff, so I also appreciate everything that the staff is doing on that front. Um, appreciated Kevin's comprehensive report today as well. Um, I really thank the staff uh, on all that they're, they're doing. Um, and also note, you know, uh, the comments that were made on uh, the federal funding uh, and the Chris's, the, the money for Chris. So I heard all that and I uh, just want to say thank you. Thank you. Vice Chair Fulton, any comments? Uh, yes, I just say good evening and again, thank all of the speakers. Uh, my colleagues have, have addressed the issues well. Um, I, I think the way my colleagues have addressed the issues demonstrates um, the extent to which we as board members take, take these matters to heart and indeed appreciate hearing um, about them. Um, so we, we know how important the, um, the transit grid issue is. Um, we, are, we are all focused on it. And I, and I also recognize the need for um, consistent uh, funding. Uh, all of us long for that, so we will all continue to, uh, to focus on it. And um, the, you know, there were three other 
different types of issues that were that were talked about um, tonight in the, in the chair um, appropriately um, focused on them. I, I, I would just add um, to that list the issues associated with the uh, the river line and the rainstorm. I, I think that's something um, that's important. We should look at, uh, especially if it's predictable. So. I'll conclude my, my comments by, by, by thanking, uh, again, the speakers, and I look forward to working with my, my uh, colleagues on the board to address these important issues. Thank you. Thank you. Chair Gutierrez, Gachetti, any comments? Uh, thank you, Joyce. I have nothing specific that hasn't been said by one of my previous board member colleagues, so I won't repeat that. Um, we appreciate everybody's time in providing comments tonight, and I think we will not now continue on with uh, the balance of our meeting. So at this time, I would call on Suzanne Mack to present the advisory committee report. Person President Corbett, um, it's, um, it's a pleasure to be here with you tonight. Um, from a citizen advocate point of view, if you were following the meetings the way I am, um, it, it, we're almost seem like we're getting back to normal. And I cannot, um, I cannot thank you all for, for all the efforts that you've um, gotten us to this point. Um, before I start my actual report, I just wanted to say something to the um, to the speakers. I mean, I, I think your board members also ex express this. Sometimes we can't answer, or you can't answer every issue um, at, from the from the dais. But um, one of the reasons why the advisory board attends these meetings and speaks at the end is is, is that we take notes and we follow up on to back to our committees on on uh, many of the issues. Tonight, I heard a follow-up on the audit, fair card, sustainability, customer advocate questions, dedicated funding, and access link and disability issues, which um, the last two, which our committee has been very, very involved in. So I just want the, um, I want the people who took the time to come to the meetings to know that when you come to a meeting and you actually express your concerns and um, people actually within the organization do follow up, and I'm sure that we will be asking questions and getting follow-up information also, and it helps us to understand what's happening um, happening throughout the system. With that, I wanted to um, to note, and Anna Marie Canella was at our meeting last month as, as we rotate from South Jersey, but we did have a joint PAC meeting, Passenger Advisory Committee meeting on June 23rd, and our chief uh, presentation was really on marketing. Sometimes people don't think about marketing um, when we have so many other things to think about, but coming back, um, the the emphasis that the marketing department is on on getting us back to pre-COVID levels. They have an, oh, they've designed a wonderful program, uh, many pieces of it, but while you've been away, which I thought was an interesting um, name for the topic, it's to inspire current and lapsed riders' confidence and attract new riders. The flex pass, which we you know we we need that in order to um, for control and flexibility. The New Jersey Transit Rewards Program, I, I think it's a wonderful. Uh, our board, our committee thinks it's a wonderful way to uh, to reward customer loyalty and um, just get people interested in coming back. Uh, I think one of the one of the board members just mentioned the New Jersey Transit to Rails uh, program, which is an interactive, user friendly online map, which explains to people how they can actually get to public spaces and green spaces by public transportation. I think we all need that release now. So I think that's a wonderful initiative for us to be pushing. And I think the most important one is Vaxride, which is um, highlighting the current New Jersey Transit service to vaccine sites and sponsored rides, giving four one-way courtesy tickets to people who are going to get their vaccination. Because even though New Jersey is doing very well, a better than most states uh, or many states, it would still have a way to go. And um, anything that transit can do to help get our people fully vaccinated is really you know, appreciated by us all. Um, the other issues, and some of them were brought up by by the um, by the speakers, but uh, we um, I know there was a discussion on the um, on the Metro Park uh, TOD uh, project, which um, has the 12 adjacent, acres adjacent to the Metro Park. The TOD program is really important because it really will uh, focus on transit oriented development and, and help help us get back that economic engine part of that's necessary for transit. Also, um, I know that um, President Corbett is involved in a very important initiative on the Northeast Corridor Commission, 
which uh, released their 15-year plan. I know a regional plan was here tonight also uh, about the improvements to the Northeast Corridor called C-35. And it's a $117 billion plan uh, with 150 projects to replace infrastructure and speed up travel times. And, you know, if, if, we, if we've learned anything, we know that we have to continue to uh, – soar up the uh, infrastructure in, in, along the corridor and in our region. Um, one of the other things I think that was very important just to us, I mean, as, as riders, but um, my committee uh, helped put together the bicycle policy on, on uh, for New Jersey Transit, and we were very pleased this week or this month to see that we now can have e-bikes and e-scooters and hoverboards um, on our buses and light rails thanks to uh, regulations being changed on lithium batteries being allowed on board, which is important, and we, we, need, we need everything we can do to, uh, to support the, the different modes of transit. And I think what um, what came out of um, the need, people spoke about the need for dedicated funding. We've heard that through decades, not not through meetings, but decades of, of discussion on on getting um, getting an, um, an obligated source of funding for us. And I, to, to that end, our federal delegation is working. I think somebody mentioned Senator Booker, and I know Senator Menendez is involved also in um, in working very strongly uh, to have this, um, I don't know, if the squabble or a policy between New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut on uh, FDA's following FDA's guidance on the the AFR and the the emergency funding uh, for for transit. And um, I think it's very important that we as advocates say that uh, we, we New Jersey, needs its fair share, and um, we hope that we'll be able to work – our federal delegation will be able to work cooperatively with the New York delegation to make sure that we don't lose a billion dollars in funding and that we actually – that they come – they follow the FDA guidelines on what money New Jersey Transit uh, should receive uh, from these emergency transit bills that are out there. Again, I just cannot thank you all enough as you sit there uh, on the dais um, supporting the, the residents and the citizens of New Jersey in what has been a really horrific time, and hopefully we will all come out the other end of it. And that, re that concludes my report. Hello. Thank you very much, Suzanne. Thank At you. this time, I, I will ask... Um, the Phil Harrison from the Senior Citizen and Disabled Residents Transportation Advisory Committee to present his report. Thank you very much. Um, good evening, uh, members of the board and members of the public. Uh, I am the current chairman of the Scatter Tap Citizens Advisory Committee. I appreciate this opportunity to address the board. As you are aware, we in New Jersey, the New Jersey legislature has designated our committee to advise and inform New Jersey Transit on accessibility for senior citizens and the disabled in regards to public transportation. Um, um, I, and I can say from personal experience the very importance of the county transportation paratransit systems and access link. Uh, I have been using access link and two of the county systems, namely the Cape May Fair Free System and the Atlantic County uh, Transportation System uh, for uh, 12 years. Uh, and, and these systems are extremely important uh, for the senior citizens and the disabled uh, population uh, of New Jersey. Um, we want to stress to the board the importance of these uh, systems. Uh, to the citizens of New Jersey, and we urge the board of uh, directors of New Jersey Transit to continue to provide economic and logistical support for the county systems and access link. One of the greatest concerns throughout uh, this pandemic has been uh, th that the citizens of the state have the opportunity to be vaccinated. We applaud the county systems and Access Link for taking extraordinary steps 
uh, during this pandemic to have provided transportation uh, for essential destinations and to the citizens to uh, for transportation to vaccination sites. Um, this issue has been um, paramount with our committee. Um, as you will recall, the Citizens Advisory Committee recently presented a resolution calling on uh, New Jersey Transit to provide vaccination sites at accessible New Jersey Transit facilities. New Jersey Transit Board and staff were of similar inclination and in fact such sites were established. I believe that when difficulties arose on getting the vaccination that lack of transportation was not one of the impediments to receiving the vaccine. Um, we currently have openings for four new members of our committee, uh, two from the central region and two from the south. Uh, recently, New Jersey Transit staff uh, sent out um, notices and uh, information to all areas of the state. The response was overwhelming. Um, we at the Citizens Advisory Committee, um, a notice was provided of the vacancies available, and um, not all, of course, can become members of the committee, but we, uh, we welcome and encourage public comment at our meetings. Um, we are proud that we are open to the public. And I just want to note parenthetically here that uh, two um, individuals in this particular meeting who were disabled um, expressed certain issues and certain concerns. Uh, our committee as advocates for the senior citizens and disabled, uh, I think they were appropriate and proper to address the board, and certainly that was an excellent uh, way to go. I want to note that we, our meetings are open to the public, and if any um, seniors or disabled have issues, we would be glad to hear them and uh, possibly advocate on their behalf, because that is one of the important functions of our committee. Um, Um, at this time, we applaud the uh, we applaud the work of Dan Mulraney of um, and the whole staff of the Fair Free Transportation System in Cape May, uh, who have developed a innovative program for demand same day demand response, uh, thereby providing greater access to the county system and also um, uh, reducing uh, the cost caused by no-shows. Um, prior to the pandemic, um, we found that uh, going on site to the different counties was the best way to learn about the county programs so that we could make suggestions and give our own advice for improvements. But unfortunately, the pandemic has uh, foreclosed this uh, possibility. Um, we are now doing the same virtually. The directors are coming to our meetings virtually, and, but we are hopeful that things will return to normal and we can get back to meetings in person and also to getting back to our insight visits. Um, um, we appreciate the, excuse me, um, As you are aware, Access Link, managed by New Jersey Transit staff, provides extensive uh, access to 
many amenities for the people with disabilities of our state and allows them to continue to live useful and productive lives. The Citizens Advisory Committee, through the mechanism of a subcommittee, is negotiating or not negotiating, communi communicating with General Manager Michelle Styler to provide rider input into the uh, this very important system for the disabled population of the state. We appreciate the uh, the cooperation of Access Link General Manager Michelle Styler in uh, in this endeavor to help us achieve our goals to represent the uh, uh, disabled residents of New Jersey. I want to thank the Citizens Advisory Committee members for their dedicated work on this committee. We also appreciate the input of uh, the Council on Special uh, Transportation members, COST, who have helped by providing technical support uh, in furtherance of the goals of the committee. We also want to recognize uh, New Jersey Transit staff uh, headed by Janelle Rivera, who have been very cooperative in aiding and encouraging the uh, the committee's efforts to achieve its goals. Um, in conclusion, I want to um, express to the board the importance of these county uh, paratransit systems that provide opportunities uh, to the seniors and disabled citizens of New Jersey. And I will ask for your support of the local program's um, uh, annual board item for 2022, funds that you will be voting on today. Thank you again for this opportunity to address the board. Uh, and on behalf of uh, the entire uh, Scatter Tap Citizens Advisory Committee. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harrison. And at this time, I will call on Board Member LaRusso to present the Operations and Customer Service Committee report. Thank you, Chair. The Operations and Customer Service Committee received an update on trends, analysis, and actions for rail, bus, light rail, and access link. The committee also received an update on cost of service. That concludes my report. Thank you. Board Member Ajmani will present the Administration Committee report. My apologies, Chair. Um, I am having a little bit of technical difficulty right now. Um, if you could give me two seconds, my laptop just decided to boot right at the wrong time. Um, if That's okay. You know what? Who could read would the report? A, would it be okay for me to do it for you? Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Joyce, is that okay? Yes, it is. The Administration Committee received a financial update. This included a summary of operating results compared to budget, fiscal year 2021 fare box revenue, actual results compared to budget, the impact of COVID-19 on ticket sales, major balance sheet items, and a report on CARES Act drawdowns, and a report on cash management liquidity. Additional information was provided as part of the agenda materials, including the cost of service, key performance indicators, fare box revenue ratios, history of vacancies, attrition and hires, ridership and revenue, and a monthly budget to actual comparison for fiscal 21. The committee also received updates from human resources and equal employment opportunity and affirmative action. That concludes the report. At this time, I would ask Vice Chair Fulton to present the capital planning policy and privatization committee report. Thank you, Chair. The Capital Planning Policy and Privatization Committee discussed the board items for the Fiscal Year 2022 Capital Program, New Jersey Transit Fiscal Year 2022 Grant Programs, Local Transportation for Senior Citizens, Persons with Disabilities, Rural and Low Income Residents, Community Mobility and Local Programs Purchase of 75 Mobility Access Vehicles, Trans Hudson Interstate Bus Survey, Execution of Contract 20-08 
of Access Link Service in Region 4, Mercer, Middlesex, Monmouth, and North Ocean Counties, and Information Technology Award of Contract for Oracle Software Maintenance and Support to Mystics for Database Infrastructure and Applications. That concludes my report. Thank you, Vice Chair. And at this time, I would call on Board Member Adams to present the Safety Committee report. Thank you, Chair. The New Jersey Transit Office of System Safety continues to create and implement proactive safety programs across our rail, light rail, bus, and access link systems. New Jersey Transit continues to make positive improvements to key safety metrics as overall injury and incident rates continue to trend in a positive direction. Every New Jersey Transit employee remains dedicated to doing their part to provide a safe method of transportation for all. Chief Trasillo updated the safety committee on the mask enforcement efforts of the police department from June 1st to June 18th. In addition, the chief briefed the committee concerning the Office of Emergency Management and their continued support in management of the state's vaccination implementation plan, which included a number of vac vaccine clinics that were set up in Hoboken Terminal during the previous month. OEM, or the Office of Emergency Management, also handled the, plan, handled the planning and preparation efforts for the Juneteenth Festival at Liberty State Park and the 4th of July fireworks in Jersey City. The chief also discussed OEM's continuing work in updating the agency's comprehensive emergency management plan with all business lines, as well as the management of the ongoing response to the pandemic. The chief also briefed the committee on the statewide outreach efforts of the department during the month of June. Finally, the chief reported on the, part, on the department's use of Narcan through the first 21 days in June, which resulted in nine lives being saved. That concludes my report. Thank you, Board Member Adams. At this time, I would ask President and CEO Corbett to present the action items. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I would now like to uh, introduce Bill Vaccaro, Senior Vice President, Chief Financial Officer and Treasurer, to present Board Item 2107-46 regarding the fiscal year 22 authorization. Bill? Thank you, CEO Corbett. We are recommending approval of Item 2107-46, resolution authorizing the continuation of operating expenditures in fiscal year 2022. Authorization to expend in the normal course of business the funds necessary to meet New Jersey Transit's obligations, essentially in accordance with the fiscal year 2021 operating budget. Action item 2010-60, resolution and attachments and until the adoption and approval of fiscal year 2022 operating budget. Authorization to acknowledge and accept its responsibility to adopt the final operating budget at the next regularly scheduled meeting or continue to authorize the expenditures of funds essentially in accordance with the fiscal year 2021 operating budget. Authorization to continue or enter into agreements and expend funds in order to continue New Jersey Transit's transportation-related programs and business operations subject to the availability of funds. Authorization to provide local share and other in-kind services or act as a pass-through agency for federal or state capital or operating funds subject to the availability of funds. We ask for approval of item 2107-46. May I have a motion to approve? So moved, Nara. May I have a second? Second, Fulton. Thank you. Joyce, would you please call the board members for comment? Yes. Board Member Adams, any comments? Um, yes, Joyce, I do have a comment on this item. Um, you know, if the public and the board remembers, um, I did not vote in favor for last year's operating budget. And because this is an extension of last year's operating budget and for two other reasons, it's unfortunate that I won't be able to vote in the affirmative for this budget. And, and it's for the following reasons. Number one, I have a fundamental disagreement with capital to operating transfers. I know this year's or the proposed budget this year before we extended last year's budget reduced it, but it still includes it. And I just have a fundamental um, disagreement with capital to operating transfers. In addition, like I mentioned last year, I really expected that the board would be a little bit more involved in the budget process. 
you know, offering options and looking at different ways to budget or different avenues, plan A, B, or C, or whatever it may be. Um, and that didn't happen the way I thought it should have. And lastly, the issue of the CARISA and American Rescue Plan funds. It's, it's unfortunate that we can't put a permanent budget in place because of something that's outside of our control. And during our previous meetings with, with the team, I had put together or I had suggested an alternate that I you know, don't believe was properly considered. So for those reasons, I'll be unable to vote yes for this, for this item. Those are my comments, Joyce. Thank you. Thank you. Board Member Doshi, any comments? No comments. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Board Member Nora, any comments? <laughs> no comments, Joyce. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Well, Board Member Rasmussen, any comments? No comments. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you. Board Member Ajmani, any comments? None, Joyce. Thank you. Thank you. Board Member LaRusso, any comments? None, thank you. Thank you. Vice Chair Fulton, any comments? Uh, no comments, thank you. Thank you. Chair Gutierrez Cacchetti, any comments? Uh, thank you, Joyce. The only thing I would like to do is to thank Kevin and his staff. Um, this last issue on the CARISA funds has been a very um, difficult uh, matter, um, and they've worked hard to find alternatives. And I'm pleased to know that, that they will continue to do so with the support of others um, till we can get to a successful end for New Jersey. Um, and so I just want to make sure that that, that is placed on the record. Yes. If you'd go ahead and take a roll call vote. Roll call vote, Board Member Adams. No. Board Member Doshi. Yes. Board Member Nara. Yes. Board Member Ajmani? Yes. Board Member LaRusso? Yes. Vice Chair Fulton? Yes. And Chair Gutierrez Cacchetti? Yes. Motion carried. Uh, thank you, Joyce. Uh, I'd now like to introduce Eric DeLeo, uh, Senior Vice President, Capital Programs, to present board item. 2107-47 regarding capital programs. Eric. Thank you, President Corbett. We are recommending approval of item 2107-47, NJ Transit 2021 Capital Plan Update Adoption and Fiscal Year 2022 Authorization to Secure Capital Funding. Authorization is sought tonight to adopt the 2021 Capital Plan Update, which is an update to a five-year capital plan document an unconstrained vision of projects to demonstrate opportunities for safety, service reliability, resiliency, sustainability, and other improvements critical to New Jersey Transit. Authorization is also sought to take whatever actions are necessary to seek and secure the funds envisioned by this program of projects. In addition, authorization is sought to transfer funding sources and amounts among program projects as circumstances require in compliance with the terms and conditions of the grants and other funding sources. Finally, authorization is sought to make application, execute contracts or agreements, and take whatever other actions are necessary to seek and secure funds consistent with the basic intent of this program, which may become available subsequent to its adoption. Uh, we ask for your approval of item 2107-47. May I have a motion to approve? So moved, Adams. May I have a second? Second, Nora. Joyce, please pull the board for any discussion on the item. Board Member Adams, any comments? Um, yes, Joyce. I'd just like to thank the team for putting together this comprehensive plan and having the foresight to be able to look at it on an annual basis. Um, I also encourage um, the staff and my fellow board members to help look for ways um, and funding sources to help fully fund this plan. Um, I was very proud of the fact that, you know, New Jersey Transit, even during the pandemic, um, which is still going on, was still executing and putting out capital projects in addition to our, our New Jersey DOT partners. So um, kudos to the team for that. 
Um, those are my comments, Joyce. Thank you. Thank you. Board Member Doshi, any comments? No comments, and thank you for, to the staff. Thank you. Board Member Nora, any comments? Um, not, other than to echo what Board Member Adams just said, uh, nothing else. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you. Board Member Rasmussen, any comments? Uh, no comments. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you. Board Member Ajmani, any comments? None. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you. Board Member LaRusso, any comments? No, thank you. Thank you. Vice Chair Fulton, any comments? Uh, yes, I, I would echo what my colleagues have said, and I, and I would and I would add that the team has made amazing progress, and the types of systems that they've been able to put in place to um, identify and prioritize work consistent with the strategic plan and a strategic vision, and prepare New Jersey Transit um, for the future um, to both drive projects that are that are ongoing right now, and also to um, position New Jersey Transit. Um, to make compelling arguments for, for funding uh, for in, important work that will enhance safety, security, uh, customer service, and um, sustainability. So I applaud the team for advancing such a, a tremendous program. Thank you. Chair Gutierrez, Cacetti, any comments? No, thank you, Joyce. Let's just go for a roll call vote. Roll call vote. Board Member Adams? Yes. Board Member Doshi? Yes. Board Member Nara? Yes. Board Member Ashmani? Yes. Board Member LaRusso? Yes. Vice Chair Fulton? Yes. Chair Gutierrez Pichetti? Yes. Motion carried. We have a recusal uh, on the next two items. Board Member Nara is recused from items 2107-48 and 2107-49. Operator, please remove Board Member Nara from the meeting for these items. Certainly, please stand by one moment. And Board Member Nara has been removed. Thank you. President Corbett, you may continue. Great, thank you. Uh, I'd like uh, now like Eric to continue. Uh, with item 2107-48 regarding uh, uh, fiscal year 22 grant programs. Eric? Thank you, sir. We are recommending approval of item 2107-48, NJ Transit's fiscal year 2022 grant programs, local transportation for senior citizens, persons with disabilities, rural, and low-income residents. Authorization is sought to execute, extend, or modify contracts to implement the fiscal year 2022 Senior Citizen and Disabled Resident Transportation Assistance Program as set forth in Exhibit A for a total program amount of $22,310,000 subject to the availability of funds. Authorization is also sought to execute all appropriate agreements and contracts to take all of the steps necessary to implement the fiscal year 2022 Federal Transit Administration Section 5311 Rural and Small Urban Areas Program as set forth in Exhibit B in an amount of $5,534,844, uh, which includes $3,534,844 in federal funds and $2 million as the injured transit share of the local match, subject to the available other funds. Authorization is also sought to execute all appropriate agreements and contracts and to take all other steps necessary to implement the fiscal year 2022, Section 5311, Rural Inner City Program for a total program map of $666,969 subject to the available their funds. We're also seeking authorization to execute all appropriate agree agreements and contracts and to take all other steps to implement the fiscal year 2022 Federal Transit Administration Section 5311B3 Rural Transit Assistance Program in an amount up to $132,157 at no cost to New Jersey Transit subject to the availability of funds. Authorization to execute all appropriate all appropriate agreements and leases to implement the fiscal year 2022 Federal Transit Administration Section 5310 Enhanced Mobility of Seniors and Individuals with Disabilities Program is also sought for $9,600,000, which includes $7,850,000 in federal funds and $1,750,000 as the injured transit share of the local match subject to the availability funds. 
authorization and sought to execute all appropriate agreements and contracts and to take all other steps to implement the fiscal year 2022 New Jersey Jobs Access and Reverse Commute, also known as the NJJARC program, for $4,500,000 in NJ Transit funds subject to the availability of funds. Authorization is sought to execute all appropriate agreements and contracts and to take other steps to implement the fiscal year 2022 NJJARC program for up to $1 million in additional funds from the state of New Jersey for a total NJJARC program cost of $5,500,000 subject to the availability of funds. Authorization to execute all appropriate agreements and contracts and to take other steps to implement the Coronavirus Response and Relief Supplemental Appropriations Act of 2021 and the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021 in amounts to, de- to be determined at no cost to New Jersey Transit. Finally, staff seeks authorization to execute all appropriate agreements and contracts and to take all other steps to implement any specially dedicated congressional appropriations, Federal Transit Administration, Section 5307, Small Urban Cities, FTA, Section 5309, Major Capital Investments, congestion mitigation, air quality, and other local projects, including funds which will be flexed into ongoing FTA programs under the fiscal year 2022 budget for $6 million, subject to the availability of funds. With all that, we ask your approval of item 2107-48. May I have a motion to approve? So moved, Adams. May I have a second? Second, Fulton. Thank you. Uh, Joyce, please pull the board for discussion. Yes, board member Adams, any comments? No comments, Joyce, thank you. Thank you. Board member Doshi, any comments? No comments, thank you. Thank you. Board member Rasmussen, any comments? No comments, thank you, Joyce. Thank you. Board member Ashmani, any comments? None, thank you. Thank you. Board Member LaRusso, any comments? None. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you. Vice Chair Fulton, any comments? No comments. Thank you. Thank you. Chair Gutierrez Cachetti, any comments? None, Joyce. Please take a roll call vote. Roll call vote. Board Member Adams? Yes. Board Member Doshi? Yes. Board Member Ajmani? Yes. Board Member LaRusso? Yes. Vice Chair Fulton? Yes. Chair Gutierrez Cachetti? Yes. Motion carried. Uh, thank you, Joyce. I'd now like uh, Eric uh, to uh, proceed with 210749 regarding a purchase of uh, 75 mobility access vehicles. Eric? Thank you, President Corbett. We are recommending approval of item 2107-49, community mobility and local programs purchase of 75 mobility access vehicles. Authorization is sought to enter into a contract with Roar Enterprises Incorporated doing business as Roar Bus Sales of Trenton, New Jersey, for the purchase of 35 mobility access vehicles, a cost of $1,556,000 plus 5% contingencies, subject to the availability of funds and board approval of the local program's annual board item, which you just approved. Authorization to exercise the options to extend NGO Transit contract number 20-008 to purchase the remaining 40 vehicles is also sought. Those vehicles would be purchased over the four-year option period in accordance with the request for proposal and the vendor's proposal at a cost not to exceed $508,900 for each additional 12-month period, plus 5% for contingencies subject to the approval of funds and board approval of the prior item. I ask for your approval of item 2107-49. May I have a motion to approve? Motion Fulton. Thank you. May I have a second? Second, Second, Adam. Thank you. Joyce, please pull the board members for any discussion. Yes. Board Member Adams, any comments? No comments, Joyce. Thank you. Thank you. Board Member Doshi, any comments? No comments. Thank you. Thank you. Board Member Rasmussen, any comments? Uh, No comments. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you. Board Member Ajmani, any comments? None. Thank you, Joyce. 
Thank you. Board Member LaRusso, any comments? No, thanks, Joyce. Thank you. Vice Chair Fulton, any comments? No comments, thank you. Thank you. Chair Gutierrez Cachetti, any comments? No, Joyce, no comments. Next is the Go roll ahead. call vote. Oh, excuse me. Roll call vote, Board Member Adams? Yes. Board Member Doshi? Yes. Board Member Ajmani? Yes. Board Member LaRusso? Yes. Vice Chair Fulton? Yes. Chair Gutierrez Cachetti? Yes. Motion carries. Operator, please bring Board Member Nara back into the meeting. Certainly, please stand by one moment. Board Member Nara has been reconnected to the meeting. Thank you. You may continue, President Corbett. Thank you, Joyce. Uh, I'd now like to introduce Jeannie Kwan, Senior Vice President, Chief Administrative Officer, to present Board Item 2107-50. Jeannie? Thank you, President Corbett. We are recommending approval of Item Number 2107-50, Trans-Hudson Interstate Bus Survey. Authorization to enter into a contract with Resource Systems Group Incorporated of White River Junction, Vermont, for the Trans-Hudson Interstate Bus Survey subject to the availability of funds. We ask for your approval of item number 2107-50. May I have a motion to approve? Motion, Nara. May I have a second? Second, Adams. Joyce, please pull the board for discussion. Yes, board member Adams, any comments? Um, yes, Joyce, just a short comment. I want to, um, first of all, um, thank staff for their comprehensive explanation of this item. And also just want to point out that although New Jersey Transit set a goal, a DBE utilization goal of 25%, that this, this entity, um, or they approved a 42.23%, um, DBE utilization, and I just want to applaud the company for um, taking our DBE goals seriously and not only meeting them, but exceeding them. Um, those are my only comments, Joyce. Thank you. Thank you. Board Member Doshi, any comments? No comment. Thank you. Thank you. Board Member Nora, any comments? Other than uh, what I said in the briefing that I'm excited that we're uh, undergoing this project. Thank you. Board Member Rasmussen, any comments? No comments. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you. Board Member Ajmani, any comments? None. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you. Board Member LaRusso, any comments? None. Thanks. And thank you. Vice Chair Fulton, any comments? Uh, no comments. Thank you. Thank you. Chair Gutierrez Cachetti, any comments? No comments, Joyce. Let's just vote. Okay, roll call vote. Board Member Adams? Yes. Board Member Doshi? Yes. Board Member Nara? Yes. Board Member Ajmani? Yes. Board Member LaRusso? Yes. Vice Chair Fulton? Yes. Chair Gutierrez Cachetti? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you, Joyce. Uh, I'd now like to introduce Mike uh, Kilcoyne, Senior Vice President, Service Transit, General Manager of Bus Operations, to present Board Item 2107-51. Mike? Thank you, sir. We are recommending approval of Item 2107-51, Execution of Contract 20-084, for the provision of access link service in Region 4, which includes Mercer, Middlesex, Monmouth, and North Ocean Counties. Authorization to enter into a contract with First Transit, Inc. of Cincinnati, Ohio, to operate access link service in Region 4 for a 36-month base contract period for fiscal year 22 through fiscal year 25 at a cost not to exceed $45,930,576 plus 5% contingencies for a total contract authorization of $48,227,105 subject to the availability of funds and board approval of New Jersey Transit's operating budget. We ask for your approval of item 2107-51. May I have a motion to approve? 
motion, Nara. May I have a second? Second, Adams. Joyce, please pull the board for discussion on the item. Yes, board member Adams, any comments? No comments, Joyce, thank you. Thank you. Board member Doshi, any comments? No comments, thank you. Thank you. Board member Nora, any comments? None, thank you, Joyce. Thank you. Board member Rasmussen, any comments? No comments, thank you, Joyce. Thank you. Board member Ashmani, any comments? None, thank you. Thank you. Board member LaRusso, any comments? No, thank you. Thank you. Vice Chair Fulton, any comments? No comments, thank you. Thank you. Chair Gutierrez Cacetti, any comments? Chair Gutierrez Cacetti, any comments? No, no, Joyce, I don't have any comments. Thank you. Roll call vote, Board Member Adams? Yes. Board Member Doshi? Yes. Board Member Nora? Yes. Board Member Osmani? Yes. Board Member LaRusso? Yes. Vice Chair Fulton? Yes. Chair Chair Scacchetti? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you, Joyce. Uh, now I'll ask Bill Vaccaro, Senior Vice President and CFO and Treasurer, to present Board Item 2107-52 regarding uh, so uh, software contracts. Bill? Thank you, sir. We are recommending approval of item 2107-52, Information Technology, Award of Contract for Oracle Software Maintenance and Support to Mythics for Database Infrastructure and Applications. Authorization to enter to a software maintenance contract for Oracle EBS with Mythics of Virginia Beach, Virginia for the period of June 21st, 2021 through June 20, 2022, in an amount not to exceed $2,081,157 plus 12 cents plus 5% for contingencies subject to availability of funds. We ask for your approval of item 2107-52. May I have a motion to approve? Motion, Fulton. May I have a second? second Nara. Uh, Joyce, please pull the, board, pull the board for discussion. Yes, board member Adams, any comments? No comments, Joyce, thank you. Thank you. Board member Doshi, any comments? No comments, Joyce, thank you. Thank you. Board member Nora, any comments? None, thank you, Joyce. Thank you. Board member Rasmussen, any comments? Uh, no comments, thank you, Joyce. Thank you. Board member Ashmani, any comments? No, thank you, Joyce. Thank you. Board member LaRusso, any comments? No, thank you. Thank you. Vice Chair Fulton, any comments? No comments, thank you. Thank you. Chair Gutierrez Cacetti, any comments? No, Joyce, thank you. Thank you. Next is the roll call vote. Board Member Adams? Yes. Board Member Doshi? Yes. Board Member Nora? Yes. Board Member Ajmani? Yes. Board Member LaRusso? Yes. Vice Chair Fulton? Yes. Chair Gutierrez Cacetti? Yes. Motion carried. Great. Uh, thank you, Joyce. Uh, now, I ask uh, Mike Hilcoyne to come back up to present uh, board item 2107 53 regarding purchase of equipment for a uh, bus maintenance facility. Mike? Thank you, sir. We are recommending approval of item 2107-53, procurement by exception to purchase two engine dynamometers, data acquisition, and control and water systems for the bus central maintenance facility. Authorization to enter into a procurement by exception contract for the purchase of two engine dynamometers, data acquisition and control and water systems with Taylor Dynamometer of Milwaukee, Wisconsin for installation, commissioning, startup testing, and related training in an amount not to exceed $499,001.55 plus 10% for contingencies 
for a total authorization of $548,901, subject to the availability of funds, we ask for your approval of item 2107-53. May I have a motion to approve? So moved, Adams. May I have a second? Second, Nara. Thank you, Joyce. Please pull the board for discussion. Yes, board member Adams, any comments? No comments, Joyce. Thank you, board member Doshi, any comments? No comments, thank you. Thank you, board member Nara, any comments? No comments, thank you. Thank you, board member Rasmussen, any comments? No comments, thank you. Thank you, board member Ajmani, any comments? No comments, thank you, Joyce. Thank you, board member LaRusso, any comments? None, thank you. Thank you. Vice Chair Fulton, any comments? No comments, thank you. Chair Chair Scacchetti, any comments? No, thank you, Joyce. Thank you. Roll call vote, Board Member Adams? Yes. Board Member Doshi? Yes. Board Member Nora? Yes. Board Member Ashmani? Yes. Board Member LaRusso? Yes. Vice Chair Fulton? Yes. Chair Chair Scacchetti? Yes. Motion carried. Sorry, Joyce. Um, I'd now ask uh, Bill Vicara to come up uh, again to present board item 2107-54. Uh, regarding insurance claims, uh, Bill. Thank you, President Corbett, sir. We are recommending approval of item 2107-54, Superstorm Sandy and other property insurance claims recovery assistance. Authorization to increase the amount for a contract with Marsh USA by $2,500,000 plus 5% for contingency for a total contract authorization of 8896270 Dollars subject to availability of funds. We ask your approval of item 2107-54. May I have a motion to approve? Motion, Fulton. May I have a second? Second, Nara. Second, Edgemani. Joyce, please pull the board for comments. Yes, board member Adams, any comments? Um, yes, Joyce, I, I do have a comment on, on this, this item. Um, from the way I read the board item, the original contract was for approximately $700,000. And now um, the team is asking the board to approve a change order, and I believe it's number seven, in the amount of $2.5 million, which would bring the total contract amount to $8.8 .8 million. In other words, this single contract that started at $700,000 is being increased by $8.1 million. Um, and I'm also understanding that there are other vendors in the industry that can provide this service. Although the staff has adequately, or though the team has adequately um, explained to me the continuity, the service that they've offered, and the fact that they've kept the same um, team on for numerous years. I just cannot support a contract that was originally bid at $700,000, given an $8.1 million of additional work. Um, I'm trying to you know, focus on equity and public procurement, and I'm sure there's a lot of bidders or firms out there that would have liked to have had a chance to participate in some of this. So um, I know the staff did the best they could for New Jersey Transit, but for this item, I cannot vote in the affirmative. So those are my comments, Joyce. Thank you. Thank you. Board Member Doshi, any comments? No comments, thank you. Thank you. Board Member Nara, any comments? Um, just briefly, Joyce, I understand Board Member Adams' concerns, but I also understand that um, Superstorm Sandy uh, caused a lot of complications, uh, that there has been incredibly intricate uh, layers relating to all the litigation. And uh, I will say, I, I have had questions about this as well, 
but I very much understand that when litigation and all of the issues relating to the compensation on these insurance claims are as complicated as they are, that continuity is very important, that um, I'll say as a lawyer that getting up to speed, getting new firms up to speed to then continue on from where we are may end up costing us more. So I am going to support this uh, this uh, um, action item, and that's it. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Board Member Rasmussen, any comments? No comments. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you. Board Member Ashmani, any comments? No comments, Joyce. Thank you. Board Member LaRusso, any comments? None. Thank you. Thank you. Vice Chair Fulton, any comments? Uh, no comments. Thank you. Thank you. Chair Gutierrez Cachetti, any comments? No comments, Joyce. Thank you. Thank you. Roll call vote. Board Member Adams? No. Board Member Doshi? Yes. Board Member Nora? Yes. Board Member Ajmani? Yes. Board Member LaRusso? Yes. Vice Chair Fulton? Yes. Chair Gutierrez Cachetti? Yes. Motion carried. Um, we do have a recusal on the next item, 2107-55. Board Member Rasmussen is recused from this item. Operator, please remove Board Member Rasmussen from the meeting for this item. Operator. My apologies. Board Board Member Rasmussen has been removed. Thank you. President Corbett, you may continue. Great. Thank you, Joyce. Uh, now I ask Bill to continue with the last uh, presentation to the board, uh, item 210755 for tonight uh, regarding personal injury claim. Uh, Bill? Thank you, President Corbett. We're recommending approval of item 2107-55, personal injury claim of Kiliak Anthony. Authorization to settle the claim of Kiliak Anthony through his attorney at an amount discussed in executive session. The Attorney General has approved the proposed settlement subject to the availability of funds. We ask for approval of item 2107-55. May I have a motion to approve? So move, Nara. May I have a second? Second, Adams. Jo Joyce, please pull the board for discussion. Yes, Board Member Adams, any comments? No comments, Joyce. Thank you. Board Member Doshi, any comments? No comments, thank you. Thank you. Board Member Nora, any comments? None, Joyce, thank you. Thank you. Board Member Ashmani, any comments? None, thank you. Thank you. Board Member LaRusso, any comments? None, thank you, Joyce. Thank you. Vice Chair Fulton, any comments? No comments. Thank you. Thank you. Chair Gutierrez Scacchetti, any comments? No, Joyce. Thank you. Thank you. Roll call vote. Board Member Adams? Yes. Board Member Doshi? Yes. Board Member Nara? Yes. Board Member Ashmani? Yes. Board Member LaRusso? Yes. Vice Chair Fulton? Yes. Secretary Chair Scacchetti? Yes. Motion carried. Operator, please bring Board Member Rasmussen back into the meeting. Certainly. One moment, please. And Board Member Rasmussen has been returned to the meeting. Thank you. Chair Gutierrez Scacchetti, you may continue. Thank you. At this time, I'd ask for a motion and a second to amend the fiscal year 2022 annual notice of meetings to include a meeting on August 25th, 2021 at 6 p.m. May I have a second to that motion? Second. second. Mm -hmm. Joyce, do you have a second? No, I did not hear the second, I'm sorry. I think Board Member Adams seconded it. Is that correct, Board Member Adams? No, I didn't, but I will, Chair. I'm trying. Well, it, somebody did. So it was me. 
It was Lauren uh, Lauren. Lerzo. Lauren. Thank you, yep. Lauren. Okay, so hearing that, Joyce? Board Member Adams, any comments? No comments, Joyce. Thank you. Board Member Doshi, any comments? No comments, thank you. Thank you. Board Member Nara, any comments? None, thank you. Thank you. Board Member Rasmussen, any comments? No comments, thank you, Joyce. Thank you. Board Member Ajmani, any comments? None, thank you, Joyce. Thank you. Board Member LaRusso, any comments? None, thank you. Thank you. Vice Chair Fulton, any comments? No comments, thank you. Thank you. Chair Gutierrez, Scacchetti, any comments? No comments, thank you. Thank you. Roll call vote. Board Member Adams? Yes. Board Member Doshi? Yes. Board Member Nora? Yes. Board Member Ajmani? Yes. Board Member LaRusso? Yes. Vice Chair Fulton? Yes. Chair Gutierrez Cachetti? Yes. Motion carries. Before we adjourn to executive session, I want to let the public know we will return to adjourn the meeting, but no further business will be conducted. May I have a motion to enter into executive session to discuss personnel matters contract negotiations, the status of pending and anticipated litigation, and matters falling within the attorney-client privilege, including but not limited to the personal injury claim of Pierre Shahedi and the personal injury claim of Viande Morales. May I have a motion to enter into executive session? Motion, Nara. May I have a second? <laughs> second, Adams. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, Joyce, please take a roll call vote. Roll call vote. Board Member Adams? Yes. Board Member Doshi? Yes. Board Member Nara? Yes. Board Member Ashmani? Yes. Board Member LaRusso? Yes. Vice Chair Fulton? Yes. Chair Gutierrez Scacchetti. Yes. Thank you. Motion carried. Operator, please move board and staff into the executive session. Certainly. Please stand by. Members of the public remaining connected. The call will go on music hold until the public session is resumed. Please stand by, board and staff. for holding. We look forward to talking with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. talking with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. Please stay on the line, and we'll be back in just a moment.
holding. We appreciate your time and patience. Please stay on the line, and we'll be back in just a moment. is appreciated. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. talking with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. Please stay on the line, and we'll be back in just a moment. appreciate your patience. Please stay on the line and we'll be back in a moment. talking with you soon. Please hold the line, and we'll be right back with you. talking with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. your time and patience. Please stay on the line, and we'll be back in just a moment.
Holding. We appreciate your time and patience. Please stay on the line, and we'll be back in just a moment. Appreciated. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. to talking with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. your time and patience. Please stay on the line, and we'll be back in just a moment. Appreciate your patience. Please stay on the line and we'll be back in a moment. with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. talking with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. your time and patience. Please stay on the line, and we'll be back in just a moment.
Holding. We appreciate your time and patience. Please stay on the line, and we'll be back in just a moment. appreciated. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. to talking with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. your time and patience. Please stay on the line, and we'll be back in just a moment. Appreciate your patience. Please stay on the line and we'll be back in a moment. with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. talking with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. Please stay on the line, and we'll be back in just a moment.
Holding. We appreciate your time and patience. Please stay on the line, and we'll be back in just a moment. appreciated. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. talking with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. your time and patience. Please stay on the line, and we'll be back in just a moment. Appreciate your patience. Please stay on the line and we'll be back in a moment. talking with you soon. Please hold the line, and we'll be right back with you. talking with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. time and patience. Please stay on the line, and we'll be back in just a moment.
Building. We appreciate your time and patience. Please stay on the line, and we'll be back in just a moment. appreciated. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. talking with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. your time and patience. Please stay on the line, and we'll be back in just a moment. Appreciate your patience. Please stay on the line and we'll be back in a moment. with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. talking with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. back in just a moment.
Holding. We appreciate your time and patience. Please stay on the line, and we'll be back in just a moment. is appreciated. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. talking with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. Please stay on the line, and we'll be back in just a moment. your patience. Please stay on the line and we'll be back in a moment. with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. talking with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. back in just a moment.
holding. We appreciate your time and patience. Please stay on the line, and we'll be back in just a moment. is appreciated. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. talking with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. Please stay on the line, and we'll be back in just a moment. Appreciate your patience. Please stay on the line and we'll be back in a moment. with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. talking with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. Please stay on the line, and we'll be back in just a moment.
Holding. We appreciate your time and patience. Please stay on the line, and we'll be back in just a moment. is appreciated. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. talking with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. Please stay on the line, and we'll be back in just a moment. Appreciate your patience. Please stay on the line and we'll be back in a moment. talking with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. talking with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. your time and patience. Please stay on the line, and we'll be back in just a moment.
Holding. We appreciate your time and patience. Please stay on the line, and we'll be back in just a moment. appreciated. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. to talking with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. your time and patience. Please stay on the line, and we'll be back in just a moment. Appreciate your patience. Please stay on the line and we'll be back in a moment. with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. talking with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. your time and patience. Please stay on the line, and we'll be back in just a moment.
holding. We appreciate your time and patience. Please stay on the line, and we'll be back in just a moment. appreciated. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. talking with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. your time and patience. Please stay on the line, and we'll be back in just a moment. Appreciate your patience. Please stay on the line and we'll be back in a moment. talking with you soon. Please hold the line, and we'll be right back with you. talking with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. Please stay on the line, and we'll be back in just a moment.
Holding. We appreciate your time and patience. Please stay on the line, and we'll be back in just a moment. appreciated. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. talking with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. time and patience. Please stay on the line, and we'll be back in just a moment. Appreciate your patience. Please stay on the line and we'll be back in a moment. with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. talking with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. back in just a moment.
building. We appreciate your time and patience. Please stay on the line, and we'll be back in just a moment. is appreciated. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. talking with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. Please stay on the line, and we'll be back in just a moment. Appreciate your patience. Please stay on the line and we'll be back in a moment. with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. talking with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. back in just a moment.
holding. We appreciate your time and patience. Please stay on the line, and we'll be back in just a moment. is appreciated. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. talking with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. Please stay on the line, and we'll be back in just a moment. Appreciate your patience. Please stay on the line and we'll be back in a moment. with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. talking with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. Thanks for holding. 
We appreciate your time and patience. Please stay on the line, and we'll be back in just a moment. appreciated. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. talking with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. Please stay on the line, and we'll be back in just a moment. Appreciate your patience. Please stay on the line and we'll be back in a moment. talking with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. talking with you soon. Please hold the line and we'll be right back with you. I hereby reconvene the open session board meetings. Joyce, would you please take roll call? Roll call. Board Member Adams? Here. Board Member Doshi? Here. Board Member Nara? Here. Board Member Rasmussen? Here. Board Member Ajmani? Here. Board Member LaRusso? Here. 
Vice Chair Fulton. Here. Chair Gutierrez Cachetti. Here. Thank you. Since there is no further business, may I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Motion, Nara. Second, Fulton. Yep. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Meeting is adjourned. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.